The NASCAR Pinty Series makes its annual early season visit to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. This legendary road course has been the home to some of the most dramatic races in Pinty Series history. When Canada's National Touring Series comes to Canada's home for motorsport, the entertainment level is off the charts. These stock car racers have mastered the 10 turns of Mosport. Names like Dumoulin, Cameron, Ranger, and Tagliani take on the new breed of young guns, ready to make a name for themselves. Welcome to round number two of the 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN. We're at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park for the eBay Motors 200. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross. Both Clinton Jeffrey and Todd Lewis are patrolling the pits for us here today. But Adam, in all the years we've been coming to this facility, I don't think we've ever had a dull or mediocre event. It's always been action-packed. The NASCAR Pinty Series visits Canadian Tire Motorsport Park twice every season. And when the green flag drops here, Dave, it's like a chess match. You need a lot of speed to stay up front, but you also need the right pit strategy and make sure you don't lose that valuable track position to be successful here. In race number one of the season, it was Trayton Lapsovich who said checkmate on the field as he won on a last lap pass. That propels him to the top of the point standings. Raphael Lassard sits second, but a tie for third between Brandon Watson and Mark Antoine Cameron. And how about Mark Antoine Cameron? Led more than 200 laps at sunset, had huge speed in that race car. That GM Pie team, they were formed over the winter, got things together in a big hurry. But if there's one thing they've shown, they're here to do business. They have a ton of speed. And Cameron, he won one of the races here last season. Watch for him to be fast today. Well, there's a number of drivers in the Pinty Series field who like to show up to the road course races. Of course, there's five on the 2022 calendar. So they go to the most sports, the 20 Vier, the Toronto, and the iCars. And with more on that, Let's send it down and say hello to Clinton Jeffrey. Thanks, guys. The Road Race Ace Group is in fine fashion this weekend. Daniel Bois and his MBS Motorsports team, well, they've decided on a road course only schedule this year. LP Montour, they've just taken possession of a new McCall car and they're going to run that out of the Dumoulin competition. Sable, and then you got Matthew Scannell, third generation driver, showed some great speed here last year. Watch for this guy to make some moves here today. Thanks, Clinton. Of course, Matthew running the same number made famous by his grandfather. So a lot of history there. Yeah, grandfather Howie, his father Howie Jr. all ran the number 99. In fact, grandfather Howie, one of the 2022 inductees to the Canadian Motorsport Hall of Fame. Of course, qualifying was rained out here because of a tremendous storm that blew through the facility. But wow, what a punch Mother Nature packed in that one. It was a wild storm, severe winds, the powers went out, a lot of damage on the property, but we're back today, ready for this race this afternoon. The facility staff worked overnight to restore power and make sure the track is in tip-top shape. And with more on the way the field's going to line up, let's send it down to Todd Lewis. Todd? Thanks, guys. With qualifying canceled, that means teams line up according to practice times. And quickest during the session was the 47 of L.P. Dumoulin. Told me, yes, it was one good lap. He wants 51 good ones during the race. He has set his car up, hopefully, for a good long run. Alongside on the front row is the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich. Last year's Rookie of the Year set a fast lap early, but then had problems during the practice session. He'd been watching some videos and tried something, not shifting into corner number three, and that sent him off course. He didn't have enough engine braking. Trayton and the team got the car back together. He will roll off on the outside of row number one. Some damp and drizzly conditions right now. What else are we going to see over the next 51 laps? When we return to CTMP, the green flag for the eBay Motors 200. from Canadian Tire Motorsport Park is brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. By E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. And by Fast Eddie Speedwear, get geared up. All the drivers are strapped in as we're ready for 51 laps here. Some light rain still falling, but it's time to go. Here's Rob Bigler from eBay Canada with the command. Drivers, start your engines. 
big smile because that's the sound we've been waiting to hear at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. The thumbs up from the drivers to the NASCAR officials indicating they have all fired up their engines and do not need a push at this point. Yeah, Gloria Ng going between the cars, making sure everyone is fired and ready to go. The dignitaries clear the way. We're going to have some great looks today, like Daniel Bo on the 31. He's got an onboard camera. I'm very excited about his start. He is in that 31 car. There's a good look at DJ Kennington, a new slimmer version of DJ Kennington. Dropped a lot of weight in the off season and there's mark antoine cameron so fast in practice we'll see what he can do in this race and now let's take a look at your ebay motors starting lineup on pole he is lp dumoulin trayton laksevich will start outside there is mark antoine cameron the 96 and brett taylor great run in practice earlier on rounding out the top five it's matthew scanell in the 99 alongside him is alex tagliani in the 18. DJ Kennington in the 17 will start alongside Kevin Lacroix in the 74. Row number five is Andrew Ranger in the 27. Gary Clute in the 59 will roll out 10th. And then row number six is Daniel Bois in the 31. Dexter Stacy in the 92. To row seven, we have Peter Clute in the six and J.P. Bergeron in the number one. Starting 15th, it's Brandon Watson in the nine. And the 98 is Sam Fellows. Looking back to row number nine, that's where we find Larry Jackson in the 84. Ray Cordemosh Jr. pilots the eight for the first time in 2022. Mark Dilley's in the 64. TJ Rinomato in the two. That's row number 10. Starting 21st, it's LP Montour in a brand new McCall car, the 13, alongside Ryan Cathcart in the 71. Brent Weller makes his debut this season alongside Wallace Stacy. And Glenn Stiers will round out the field all by himself in row number 13. An impressive field of cars, and Dave, a lot of inexperience on a wet racetrack from the mid-pack to the back. Yeah, and those practice times set in dry conditions. As we take a look at today's E3 Spark Lux race analysis, it's wet, but it's a strategy race. Pit stops will come into play. They definitely will. 51 laps the distance. Traditionally, by lap 12, you see these cars starting to pit. They're gonna have to go a little bit further because on a wet track, they suck more fuel. With more on today's race, let's send it down trackside to Todd Lewis. Todd? Five-time winner here at CTMP, Kevin Lacroix rolls off eighth today, tried a new setup during the practice session, really didn't get a sense of how good it would be on the car. They've decided they're going with it. It may work, it may not work. If it does work, though, he could get his sixth victory. Two drivers we want to keep our eye on today are J.P. Bergeron and Brandon Watson, newcomers to the series here. Both of them showed signs of brilliance at sunset in the opener, but both are getting their feet wet here today. Two drivers that are going to be real fast this season. Keep your eye on both of them today. Literally getting their feet wet, Clinton, <laughs> because it isn't dry out there. You can see the spray off these general treaded tires, the rain tires fitted to all of these cars. As a pace car pulls in, the field will stack up two by two out of turn number 10 when they hit the front straightaway. Patricia Nevis from Castrol, Canada with the wave of the green flag and we're underway in the eBay Motors 200. Big launch for LP Dumoulin down into turn number one. He'll run the racing line. Mark Antoine Cameron to the outside. There you can see how perilous the racing line can be. Dumoulin got all kinds of crossways in turn number one. Gingerly on the throttle is Kevin Lacroix as he passes three cars on the outside of turn two. Look at him go now up the inside of Alex Tagliani. As soon as the rain started to fall here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, everybody started pointing to the driver of the 74 as a race favorite as Daniel Bois finds out just how tricky it is to drive these stock cars in the way. They rumble down towards turn four into turn five. Andrew Ranger looking to the outside of LP Dumoulin. What a beautiful crossover by Ranger. It didn't work, but it was beautiful. Rangers won three times here. Again, he puts the power down in that GM Pie Chevrolet, the number 27. Look at how difficult it is to see when you're in the wake of another car and some debris on the back straightaway in the early going. 
Yeah, I don't know if that came off the race leader's car or maybe it was on the track from the pace lap. It doesn't look like anything too solid, like a chunk of fiberglass with tape on it. And it's quite breezy again here today, not necessarily what we saw just about 24 hours ago, but uh, it could also be some debris blown up from the camping area as well. Andrew Ranger running that outside, running offline, which is takes me back to the go-karting days, Dave. Where the farther you can get off the racing line and into the marbles, the more grip you're going to have. And that's the line he's choosing right now. There you can see Alex Tagliani doing the same thing, going back to his karting roots as well. That's to get you out of all the rubber, all the oil that's laid down in a typical racing line. It is so slippery down there as soon as you add water. So you get out to the fresh asphalt and you actually have traction. Yeah, to go completely opposite to what you would think in normal situations. is Andrew Ranger to the inside of LP Dumoulin. And I mentioned it during the E3 analysis, Andrew Ranger with his hands full of steering wheel, running these lower RPMs. I was talking to John Fletcher. It'll actually take more fuel to drive slower than it does when they're flat out on the throttle because of the air fuel mixture. So John saying they're going to pit later than they normally would because of these conditions. It's going to change the fuel mileage significantly. And to add another variable into the mix, the radar and forecast is indicating we may see clearing conditions before this race is over. A lot of teams watching the radar to find out what it's going to do. As you can see, car off the pace down the back straightaway. It looks to be the number 98 of Sam Fellows. Yeah, what a bummer for Sam Fellows. Problems on that curb records 98. He is off speed and about half a lap away from the pits. Oh, my goodness. Daniel Bois to the outside of Dexter Stacy. That could have been catastrophe at the fastest point of the racetrack. On the entrance of turn number eight, Bois hangs on to it. Not only does he hang on to it, he's in attack mode on the 59 of Gary Clute. As you can see, he goes outside to inside. Now, we should talk about Daniel Bois just a little bit. He is not really a veteran of this style of race car. What he is, is a veteran of Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. He's a driver, coach. He's raced here many, many laps in different types of vehicles. I would venture to bet Daniel Bois has probably been to every race we have ever had at CTMP. Just not as a driver, but he knows this place like the back of his hand. It's actually his third start with the NASCAR Pinty Series with a new team just formed in this offseason. Yeah, it came all the way back in 2013, those starts. And this back up towards the front of the field. You can see Mark Antoine Cameron continues to lead. That is his teammate, the 27 of Andrew Ranger, now in a battle with the 18 of Alex Tagliani. These cars have come a long way. Let, let's have a listen. Cars still travel at a blistering pace down the back straightaway, but on pit road is Sam Fellows. Yeah, guys, second stop for Sam Fellows. Talked to the team. They said there is a vibration somewhere in the drive line. They hit all the lug nuts. They thought they might have had it. They tried to diagnose it, but he is back on pit road once again. That's a tough break for the Curb Records team. Sam Fellows had this race circled on his calendar, but out in front, continues to be the number 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron, once again, your race leader. And we're working lap number six of the second race of the 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series season at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. There you see the two GM Paye Chevrolet backed entries with the LP Dumoulin machine sort of sandwiched in between for a little while, but not too long as Andrew Ranger goes around on the outside and turn four. And some slower traffic, that's Ray Jr. quarter march that they just went around. We're going to see a lot of that as we go through today, Dave. The, the variation of speeds from the fast cars to the slow cars is going to be wild. But as we can see, visibility improving. The rain is mostly stopped. It's just the water off the track spinning back up. So still, they need those rain tires and the windshield wipers working as fast as they can. 
talked about one of the fast cars too. Have a look at that ESR wheels, a brand new sponsor for the 74 team of Kevin Lacroix as he moves into the top three now. Kevin Lacroix definitely one of the fastest cars in the field in the early going. I don't think the opening race at Sunset Speedway would have met Kevin's approval. They just didn't have the speed that he would have liked. Obviously, a race in the rain, just what the doctor ordered, because Kevin Lacroix shines when the sun does not. <laughs> he sure does. You're absolutely right. Good look at the Viagra St. Joubert Fast Wheels, number 18 of Alex Tagliani, as he continues inside the top five. That was a tight battle for a little while, but they've spread out a little bit, and actually Tagliani has dropped off from that pack quite a bit. And I'm not sure if that would be strategy, Dave, to get out of their rooster tails, or if the 18 car just isn't quite running as well as he'd like. You can see the two of TJ Rinomato and the Delta Bingo RGC Sports entry going a lap down to your race leader. There goes Tagliani around on the outside of one into the inside of turn two. The top three together basically knows the tail, but the 47 machine, he's falling off just a little. That's right, guys. Our pole sitter has dropped back a few spots since the start. Not really worried about it yet, though. He's telling the team, I'm just taking it easy. As we detailed, he's concerned about long runs, especially in the second half of this race, just kind of pacing himself right now in the early going. And you can see where your favorite driver is running by checking the casserole ticker on the side of your screen. There's a good look at Kevin Lacroix, who again is closing the gap on Andrew Ranger in the 27 car. Remember, those two have a history here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park from a few years ago. If you're a good road racer in the NASCAR Pinty Series, you have a history with yeah. Kevin Lacroix. <laughs> or a history here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. It never fails to produce exciting finishes. Good look at Gary Clute in the 59. That's a brand new race car, and they did have it out testing. They did about six laps. Gary said, it's good, we're done. And they put it back in the trailer. They knew they had a good piece right out of the trailer. And how impressive is this, Daniel Bois in that number 31? I mean, he's just given that car a great drive. He's found himself a little pocket out there, keeps himself out of harm's way and having a great drive at the MBS Motorsports Chevrolet. Yeah, Bolton GM coming on board. This team supporting them for this race. Uh, team hoping to do a few more events over the course of the 2022 season. But Daniel saying this is by far the best piece of equipment he's been in the NASCAR Pinty Series ever. It's a former 22 racing car, as you saw the sticker still on the dash panel. But Adam, you talked about the lead that the 96 had built up. And there you saw a quick shot how close this driver is, the 27 of Andrew Ranger. He's right there. As a matter of fact, he starts to take a look on the outside of the Andretti straightaway. Again, trying to find that different line where his car works a little bit better. Well, normally, you'll see these cars draft up this long straightaway, but with a rooster tail coming off the car ahead of you, you can't really run right behind them because it affects your visibility so badly. You can see a quick wiggle from the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. He moves through turn 8, 9, now into 10. And they are nose to tail. So the difference back to Lacroix was 1.2 seconds the last time they crossed the line. This time it's going to be a very much different story. 0.7 of a second that time between the top three. Wallace Stacy from Kahnawake, Quebec, going a lap down that number 66 machine as the leaders enter turn number two. Way out to that painted surface. Now you don't want to drive on the painted surface. You want to flirt with it a little bit because as soon as you get on that painted area, that's like stepping on ice. Just flirt with it. Hello, yeah. hello painted surface. <laughs> you just tease it a little okay, bit. Okay, yeah, there you go. Having a look back through the field, though, we should mention the 13 of LP Montour is on the move. He's up inside the top 10 now, sitting in ninth spot, having a great run. Sort of an unknown commodity in the NASCAR Pinty Series is LP Montour, but a new McCall car, they're preparing it out of the Dumoulin Racing Sable so that they know what they're doing, and clearly LP Montour feels comfortable out there because he is tearing through the field. Yeah, he's got one start under his belt. That came last year at the Grand Prix Trois-Rivières, finished eighth in that race. And LP Montour, a veteran of the Trans Am Series, um, the FEL Sports Car Series Canada, and so he knows how to get around road and street circuits as well. So it's familiar, but just a different car. Right. 
And these do drive differently than almost any type of sports car someone can get behind the wheel of. They seem to close in on the, on the straightaway. They spread out then through turns eight, nine, and 10. They accordion back together. Andrew Ranger a little bit quicker than Cameron. Lacroix a little bit quicker than Ranger. And then the rest of the, the lap, they stretch that out again. 10 laps now in the books of a scheduled 51. And the team still looking for that dry line to start forming before any pit stops will be made to change onto slick tires. But it is still very slick and slippery. Watch the hands of LP Dumoulin. He's busy. In, in the last view, I was focused on his eyes. Just, just the absolute focus of the driver there as he navigates this racetrack. Trey Milakovic, he started second in this event, but the teenager from Grimsby, Ontario, just doesn't have a lot of experience driving in the rain, so he dropped back fairly quickly, but he's still solidly in the top 10. He's found himself a comfortable spot just ahead of Matthew Scannell and the Arthur Electric Machine. Yeah, he's doing very, very well. And you remember, in the practice earlier on this weekend, that's why he's got the new nose and repaired fenders on the RGC Sports FBM entry. Unfortunately, tucked it into the tire wall in turn number three, but he's learned from that. And now he's piecing himself together a pretty good run, and he needs to. He came in as your points leader. You talk about busy hands. How about busy arms? You can see the movement of Matthew Scannell in there. It's quite a coordinated effort to get these race cars around the track. We've got a pass for second place. Kevin Lacroix goes around Andrew Ranger. Ranger tries to get back on the gas on the exit of 10, kicks the back end of that Chevy out, but can't close the gap back on the 74. So a change of position. Here comes LP Dumoulin around the lap car, the zero of Glenn Styers in his very first road course race here in the NASCAR PT Series. Yeah, Styers really getting broken into this type of racing. Not only his first road race, his first rain race as Kevin Lacroix sweeps to the inside of Cameron in turn number two, which sets him up to the outside of turn three. That's not a bad place to be. There's lots of grip out there. Now he goes to the inside, turn number three, looking for the lead on the exit of three. He'll be on the outside of turn number four. That's just the way Canadian Tire Motorsport Park works, but it's going to work. For the driver out of St. Eustache, Quebec, your new race leader here in the eBay Motors 200. That was almost a game of chicken. Who was going to live first? Because you saw Cameron back. To, he didn't back out a little bit. He dropped the anchor to, to get Kevin Lacroix a little bit of room to negotiate turn four and for Cameron not to destroy both of them. Now going a lap down is Brett Taylor, the driver from Calgary, Alberta, in the North Country TCB Trailers. EHR entry had a great run in practice in the dry, but racing in the rain is a completely different story. Unfortunately for Brett Taylor, not able to keep up the pace. And just look at them hang the back ends of these race cars out. It, it's just the amount of finesse, the amount of car control these drivers have. We just can't say enough about how skilled you have to be as a driver to be able to do that. You're just always steering. You never get a break, even if you watch them down the straightaway as Lacroix drifts it through turn number one. And he's your race leader, so that's a car that's working really well. And your gas pedal is more important. As hard as they work on the steering wheel, the effort you put into the throttle is even more important. Because once you break those tires loose, it's very hard to gather the car in. Now you can see the two GM Pie entries and it looks like the 96 is a little bit off the pace he is off the pace possibly a left rear tire down for mark antoine cameron you can see the back end sagging on that car the worst possible place just after they pass pit road and a left rear flat for cameron so his teammate has gone through brett taylor is a lap down to your race leaders but he'll get around the 96 and right down on the rim. So that's going to make challenging conditions and now a challenging race car make it so much more difficult to get back to pit road. It'll turn left without an awful lot of problem, but any right turn is just going to be horrific for Mark Antoine Cameron. He is going to have to limp that car slowly around the racetrack to get it to pit road. But now what will he do? Do they put new rain general tires on or is it dry enough to attempt the slicks that's the big question in the pits 
Yeah, hard to say. There is still a lot of moisture on the racetrack, but you need it saturated in order for rain tires to be effective. Good look at the Castro Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington and the oh. six of Peter Clune as he gets together with your race leader. They slide through turn number one. Lacroix keeps it off the wall and he maintains the lead. That was the most beautiful synchronized spin I think I've ever seen. They, they hooked together, spun together, but they both saved the car at the very same time. And how did Lacroix maintain the lead? He almost hit the wall in turn number one. It looks like Marc Antoine Cameron has made it to pit road. Tough break for the 96 here. Marc Antoine Cameron, a left rear will go down and they will be the ones that are gonna go to the slick tires here as things start to dry up. And you can see they have to lift the car off the ground just to get the jack underneath, but it'll be interesting to see how Cameron performs with those slick general tires. Have another look at this incident in turn number one, though. And Lacroix locked up those tires, so, so that engine had to have stalled. Yeah, it's tall because I, I don't know if he would have hit the starter button or just dumped the clutch as it was rolling. But some heads up driving by Kevin Lacroix and a nice job by Peter Clute as well. But now as we head over to complete lap 14, pit stops have started and the number nine of Brandon Watson will make a stop for some fuel. Watson's done a nice job so far this race, just keeping himself out of trouble as we look at Dumoulin going around DJ Kennington on the racetrack. More drivers and some of the leaders starting to come down pit lane as the 59 finds his Dauphin. Gary Clute also brings the 59 in here, was having a good day, just a splash and go of fuel for him. Now they don't need too much to make it the entire distance, so a lot of these drivers just taking a little bit to maintain the lightweight, try to keep up the speed in the early going of the eBay Motors 200. Welcome back to NASCAR Pinty Series Racing here on TSN and the eBay Motors at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park as the 47 slowly brings it all the way down pit lane. LP Dumala along pit road. It is a fuel stop, scheduled fuel stop. Little trouble getting the probe in. Now it's getting full of fuel. They will top him up. He will be good to go in the distance. And you can see fighting with that gas can to try and get it engaged in the back end of this WeatherTech .ca Dodge. And LP fighting with the race car, trying to keep it straight on the exit of pit road to get back out onto the racetrack. Meanwhile, on track, Kevin Lacroix leads by about a dozen car lengths over Andrew Ranger. After having that incident in turn number one with Peter Clute, it looks like the 74 has settled down a little bit. He's opened up a bit of a gap now on the 27 of Andrew Ranger. And you can hear them running those engines. They're, they're revving them out just a little bit higher because they're getting a little bit more bite. So the speeds are picking up. Now you're not seeing as much spray on the racetrack as well. Look at how they make their way through turn eight. Yes, the car is still twitchy. It's still sliding, but it's not quite as wet as the leader heads towards pit lane. The 74 is in and the 27 of Ranger is going to follow him. Oh, Kevin Lacroix is hung up behind J.P. Bergeron. This is a long trip down pit lane, and Bergeron is very cautiously driving. Andrew Ranger brings it in. They will clean the windshield on the number 27 and get him ready for more competition out here. Again, just a splash of gas for Ranger as well. Sign waving for Bergy. He is along pit road. Fuel goes in. He will be able to go the distance. The 74 of Kevin Lagois also along pit road. Fuel is completed. He's going to jump around that one car. And that's what he needed to do. He needed to have a quicker pit stop. He got out in front of both the 27 and the 74. But Bergeron will follow in the first Ford Mustang in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Interesting with when Ranger pitted there, they were wiping off the windshield. Andrew Ranger does not run a windshield wiper. Another one of your leaders down pit lane, it's the 18. Alex Tagliani next along pit road to make his scheduled stop for fuel smooth so far. That's the key, don't make a mistake. 
And that really sums it up, doesn't it, Dave? Racing in the rain is an art form. The biggest thing to master is don't make them. Eliminate your mistakes and then focus on where you can pick up speed. Well, that's almost on any given day in the NASCAR Pinty Series. His mistakes are so, so costly, especially mistakes on pit road. And you do not need one of those. As the two race leaders covered by a blanket as they head down the Andretti straightaway. And you, you mentioned a little bit earlier, Andrew Ranger not running a windshield wiper. Lot, runs a lot of rain -X to let that water bead off the windshield. And obviously when you run that product, you can't run a wiper because it'll smear and take it off and you'll lose all the effects that the rain -X would give you. T.J. Rinomato in the two, tucks to the inside and in turn number nine as the leaders go around for the gates in. Ray Jr. Cordemosh, the next one in for gas. A quick splash for the eight car. They take a look under the right side. Don't see anything wrong. And if you can see, the exhaust is pushed in here. Right up here, you can see the exhaust is pushed in. They made some contact there. And now the exhaust is actually pinched right off. That engine is not going to run good. It's going to cause them all kinds of problems. They have to get the pipe open. Yeah, it'll affect the way the engine runs, and it could put a lot of fumes inside the race car as well. That's a great pickup by Clint to see that exhaust by pinched as a 31 of Daniel Blyes in for his fuel stop. So an inexperienced crew, again, limiting the mistakes, and Daniel Bois in and out rather quickly. I believe he stalled the car on exit. It looks like he's got it going once again, but a little hiccup there exiting pit road. A couple of drivers hitting all their marks so far. Well, we've got smoke. Smoke out the back of the Ranger 27. Oh, this is not good. You can see the dirt on the back bumper of that white bumper of the Chevrolet of Andrew Ranger, but that is quite clearly some heavy smoke as he works down the Andretti straightaway. You can almost see it coming from underneath the race car. Yeah, I'm not sure where that would originate, if that's a rear end going or if something else is amiss on the Ranger 27. An impressive run so far for the 99 of Matthew Scannell. Fuel going in, checking with the driver. He's complete and on his way. Scannell getting off for the squeegee. He just declines it as Todd Cresswell poked his head inside that race car. But this smoke still coming from the back end of the 27 of Andrew Ranger. And this is shades of last year. Remember him in the purple 51 had the exact same thing happen where that vehicle smoked for nearly the entire race. I don't believe this is the kind of smoke that allow you run very long, Dave. And it's in the cockpit as well. Have a listen if we can hear the engine. You look at the tack and it's sort of bouncing around. Andrew Ranger is going to fight. He won't give up. He's not a driver that gives up very easily. No, Ranger won't be pulling off the racetrack until he's called off the racetrack. The Bullies truck stop 92 with Dexter Stacy on pit lane. He'll take his fuel and get back onto the racetrack. I was trying to look behind the 27 of Andrew Ranger to see if there is a trail of oil being left on the racetrack. And it looks like there might be just a little bit. It's hard to tell, but when the back bumper gets discolored like that, smoke doesn't really discolor the, the bumper as much as the oil getting on it and it gathering all the debris that comes up off the racetrack. So there is something coming out of the 27. You see the line continuing to dry down the straightaway as they head towards turn number eight. Still your race leader is the Lacroix tuning number 74 of Kevin Laquan. There goes the smoking number 27 of Andrew Ranger, and he's going to take it all the way to the pit lane. A black flag being shown to Andrew Ranger for that smoke, so the crew, at the very least, will have to get it checked out. He'll take it down to the attention of his crew chief, former series champion, Caden Lapsovich. Andrew Ranger brings the number 27 in. They're immediately going to go under the tail tank of this one and see what the problem could be. The car was smoking heavily here under racing conditions and the crew trying to figure out what the problem is. Looks like they're fidgeting with the fuel cell thinking it might be a rear end. Now the jack goes up. They're going to take a look underneath the engine compartment as well. Looks like former series technical director Jeff Wilcox involved in that and he's waving his arms on the other side of the wall. I think he can see the oil pouring out of the front of the engine compartment. They know their day is done early. Lap 19 is the one we're working out of a scheduled 51. And all of a sudden, Kevin LaCroix can look in his rearview mirror, and there is nobody back there. 
nobody at all except for the cars he's putting a lap down as Kevin Lacroix continues this blistering pace. Let's head down back into the pits and check in with Clinton who's standing by with the crew chief for the 2017. Clinton? We got Caden laps here. Caden, uh, tough break for Andrew. What's the story on the 27? Uh, it looks like there's a hole in the oil pan or something right now. He said he, he caught a curb pretty good and might have bottomed out on the racetrack or something. So we're going to try and go back and patch it up as good as we can. We need to salvage something here. There you have it from Caden Lapsovich, new crew chief for Andrew Ranger and the Pi A Chevrolet team. You know, we should tell the story of Caden Lapsovich, of course, the youngest champion in the history of NASCAR Touring Series when he won the championship. But he went away to school to learn about racing and he went to work for race car builders. He spent a number of years learning everything he can about race cars. And now to see him as a crew chief in this series uh, is pretty impressive. Yeah, he's done a lot of growing up in the last couple of years. If you haven't been following Caden Lapsovich's career, and there is the Glenn Stires Racing Oshwigan Speedway. Zero of Glenn Stires in for his scheduled fuel stop. Good look at Gary Cluton talking to John Fletcher, who helped build this car. Asked him why he stuck with the Dodge style body. He says, I think there's an aero advantage to the Dodge style. So that's why he likes it with the long straightaway here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. It's hard to argue with John Fletcher. He knows his way around these race cars. He's been around an awful long time, and it seems to work. So the first round of pit stops in the books, the field sorting itself back out, but a lot of drivers still trying to march towards the front. Not quite comfortable enough. Only one driver has taken on slick tires, and that is the driver of the 96, Mark Antoine Cameron, but he's still not laying down blistering lap times just yet. No, there's still, on certain parts of the track, still too much moisture. One driver who we may see a little bit later on in 2022 is standing by with Todd Lewis. Todd? Kyle Steckley, who's working on the crew today for 22 racing, finished 10th in the APC race last night. When might we be seeing you here in a Pinty's race this season? I don't know. I'd like to get out and do a Pinty's race, but, you know, it's a lot of funding needed and working with a couple companies and maybe make something happen. But for right now, just learning as much as I can and uh, hopefully we get a good finish today with the 20 crew. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you. He has such a great attitude. He's right in there getting his hands dirty at every event. He takes it all in. He's a student of the sport, that's for sure. Kevin Lacroix continues out in front here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Welcome back to NASCAR Racing on TSN. The eBay Motors 200 is brought to you by WeatherTech. Laser measured for a perfect fit. Nothing protects your car, truck, or SUV like WeatherTech. By eBay Motors. The right parts and the right vehicles at the right price. That's right. And by QuickWick, the world's best fire starter. It's been an action-packed race so far. The 59 of Gary Clute heading down pit lane. Watching his speed as he makes his way down to his pit box. And that's where Glenn Jeffrey's standing by. Gary Clue will pull the 59 here to pit road. Fletcher and the crew will go to work on the left side first. They're going to switch out these rain tires and put the slicks on. They'll make their way back around to the right side and throw in some of these smooth generals over here as well. Our spotters around the track watching the lap times of the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron. Again, he was the only driver to move to slicks early on. The track was still relatively wet, but a cut left rear tire sort of forced his hand, and it looks like the Clute crew has decided now is the time to make the switch. And it's kind of the pendulum swinging, if you will. Cameron was slower initially on those slick tires, but now his speeds have crept up to where he's a touch faster than the cars on rain tires. And that's interesting, too, because that's not normally the move by the 59 team. Normally, they will take tires a little bit later on in the event, so switching things up a little bit as far as strategy goes. I think even more so than, than taking tires later in the event is John Fletcher does not like to do things the way everybody else does. <laughs> so he will find an alternative strategy. On board with Daniel Blunt. How about the run 
This gentleman is having started 11th and is currently inside the top five in the MBS Motorsports Bolton GM, number 31. And while the scoring pylon has him fifth, he is actually fourth because as we just saw, Gary Clute on pit road. Yeah, there's only one official timing and scoring strike. That is at the start finish line as far as official NASCAR scoring goes. So you have to complete the full lap before you're picked up and the lineup is corrected. We continue under green though in the eBay Motors 200. Welcome back to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park where the NASCAR Pinty Series has enjoyed a rich history. 22 races spread over 15 years. And there you see one of the drivers in the early part of his Pinty Series career, but a veteran down pit lane. Kevin Lacroix had making that long drive down pit road. You can get away with going a little bit quicker in this race because there really is nothing to officially mark their speed. Leader makes the stop along pit road. The crew will go to work on the outside, left side first to put on fresh general tire slicks. For Kevin Lacroix, they'll move their way around. They will be able to change all four tires during this stop because they are switching from rain tires to slick tires. Smooth stop so far for the 74 bunch. And before this pit stop, he had opened up a seven second lead over this driver, the 47 WeatherTech Dodge of LP Dumoulin, who is now your new race leader. And unbelievable how this race has, has transpired. We're, we're past the halfway point. There has been no yellow flag. I, I couldn't even fathom this, given the field of cars and the amount of inexperience on the racetrack. The fact that we've remained under green is a real testament to drivers like TJ Renamato in that number two, still very early in the race car driving career. And this has been a tall order to ask these drivers to keep the things on the racetrack. Alex Tagliani just ahead of the ESR wheels, number 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Got that lap car, TJ Renamato sandwiched in between. But now Lacroix is getting his first taste of, is the track dry? You can see a little bit of a dry line, hints of it, but there's still some patches of very, very wet areas. It looks to me as though Lacroix is driving through the wettest part of the racetrack right now. That dip before turn five and this coming on to the straightaway where you go down into this little gully. Uh, it seemed a lot wetter earlier on. You can still see standing water, but on the racing groove, it looks fairly dry. And that's the thing is the tires build up heat. They start to dry out the racetrack. Obviously, the engines, the exhaust, all help to make that racing line dry up just a little bit quicker. Whoa, ho, ho. sending it. Turn number two is your race leader, LP Dumoulin. As he gathers it back up, that runoff area wasn't there just a few years ago. No, that would have been catastrophe a number of years ago down onto the wet grass. Couple drivers head for pit lane as we ride on board the 99 of Matthew Skinnell. Just in behind him is the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Skinnell will find his pit stall and Tagliani's just up ahead. There he goes. Todd? 18 makes his stop now for fresh general tires left side of that 18 machine going up rain tires coming off and the left side smooth stop so far crew moving around they will next do the right side this is the same thing don't make a mistake on this stop that costs you time and yeah, Todd everything looks like it's going like clockwork so far waiting on the jack now for the 18 a little bit slow over on the left-hand side. The air gun is caught underneath on the left-hand side of the car. The well, air gun is caught on the left-hand side of the car. They're going to have to get that back up in the air to get that gun out from underneath there. And you can see they took the air gun from the front of the car to the back to continue with the tire change, but this will be a penalty once he's released from his pit stall. There's some things that slip past the eye of our very capable NASCAR officials. Running over an air hose is not one that's easy to hide. No, especially when the car sits on it for a period of time, but LB Dumoulin continues out in front in the WeatherTech Belmar number 47. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, there'll be more NASCAR action on TSN.
the 21 champion along pit road for his scheduled four tire stop fresh general tire slicks over around to the left hand side a lot of brake dust coming out of that left front on the 47 car tires are which being made smooth so far for lb dumoulin crew moving around now to the right side now we're going to see which strategy plays out towards the end it's fairly clear Lacroix will have the advantage. LP Dumoulin's car still up in the air on the right side as Lacroix goes by at racing speed into turn one. So it gives you an idea of how big of a cushion you need to make a four-tire stop here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Dumoulin was ahead by 35 seconds, and Kevin Lacroix is your new race leader. 32 laps of action here at CTMP, and we've still got drivers threading the needle in, in traffic. That's Mark Antoine Cameron just ahead of Kevin Lacroix in the 74. That's a big deal because that puts Cameron back on the lead lap. But have a look at the ticker on the left side of the screen. LP Montour is now up into the top three, and Daniel Bois is sitting in fourth in the 31. An impressive drive for sure as we watch Kevin Lacroix into turn number five, the Moss hairpin that leads the way onto the Andretti straightaway, which is a long, drawn out straightaway. They grab all the gears and pick up enormous speeds. I, I don't want to say anything out of fear of jinxing it, but 32 laps in the books and we've yet to see a caution flag. That is not something that we normally see here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. It has happened once before. It was 2017. Do you remember who won that race? I actually do. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix. But again, we talked about Montour and Bois inside the top five. How about rookie of the year candidate, the number nine of Brandon Watson sitting fifth? And we felt a rookie of the year candidate would run very well here, but we thought it was going to be J.P. Bergeron in the number one, who is having a good run. But Brandon Watson in the top five, I don't think any of us would have predicted that. After his race at Sunset Speedway, he admitted he hadn't really been to a lot of road course races, let alone driven in them. So you have to think back to when he raced go-karts. I believe the last time he was in a go-kart was when he was 12. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Similar, but different. <laughs> On board with Matthew Scannell, that shot out the passenger side to the 59 of Gary Clute as the 18 goes by as well. So Scannell will try and get the toe down the straightaway. Because now you can see they are lining up. There's no spray anymore. Right, directly in each other's path. You get into that slipstream, catch a draft. Gary Clute got a draft, stuck his nose out to the inside of Tagliani. Doesn't do anything with it going into turn number eight, but you do get in a driver's rear view mirror. And there you can see the nine just ahead of those two drivers as well. Brandon Watson going through with the white and blue car. You saw just a quick glimpse of it just ahead of Alex Tagliani. Daniel Bois makes a stop down pin lane as Watson will pick up a spot into fourth now. Tag is in the top five. They're certainly still not hard on the throttle and hard on the brake pedal. They're still finessing these cars around the racetrack, but every lap just getting a little bit faster. So here's the difference in tires. We know the 18 and the 59 are on slick tires. You can hear them actually squealing as this track continues to drive. The nine is still on the treaded general tire. So that's the difference in speed. You know, and if I'm Brandon Watson's crew chief, I might leave him on those tires just because that is what he has felt all day long. Even if you're slowing a little bit on the racetrack, you're giving a driver consistency. You put him on slick tires, he's got to learn all over again. It's all about points too, right? He finished in the top three at Sunset Speedway. So gather some experience, gather some points because we have a lot of road and street courses coming up on the 2022 calendar. There's a driver we haven't seen much of today. Both Larry Jackson in the O'Neill Electric 84 and DJ Kennington, the Castrol Edge 17. They're quietly having solid runs. When, when you don't get talked about all day, generally speaking, you're probably somewhere in the middle. And here at this race on this day, I think that puts you in good position as the race wears off. Now the drivers are working hard though, and we do have to tip our hats to the track officials here, Miles and the entire team at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park for the work they did. We're running on generator power 
here at the racetrack just to get this event in. And we also have to send a big hello to Armando from our crew. He's unable to attend here today. He'll be back in the fall for the next Canadian Tire Motorsport Park race. Yeah, look forward to having Armando back on the team and back on his perch. And as Miles Brandt said, pre-race in the ceremonies, a big thank you to all of the track volunteers. And Canadian Tire Motorsport Park runs on a lot of volunteers who toughed out wild weather this weekend to be able to help us put on a show. There's the Kamloop number 13 headed down pit lane, Clinton. LP Montour will bring the 13 car here to the pits. The Dumoulin competition crew go to work on the left side. He is still on the race and he will swapping back to the slicks here. He's been having a good run. He pitted from third. So we'll see what he can do once he gets slick tires. LP Montour was having a really good time. At least it looked like it from the outside. That car was hanging out at nearly every turn. I was having a good time watching him. <laughs> I mean, he was full speed ahead, and you could see barely a mark on the race car, so he did it with a lot of skill and precision. It's yeah. a battle for fifth spot between Tagliani, now fourth as Montour drops down the list. So Clute is in the fourth position. Tagliani jumps up to third as pit stops continue to cycle through. More drivers opting to go to slick tires. These races at CTMP are very hard to follow as they sweep around Brian Cathcart in the 71. But a race under green, it gets very challenging, even with electronic timing and scoring, to know who's battling with who for position. Scannell goes through the Arthur Electric number 99 just ahead of the number nine of Brandon Watson who continues inside the top five. Again, he's the only one in the top five still on those treaded tires. There we see Watson now coming off of turn number four down into the Moss hairpin. He'll go to the inside of Cathcart in that 71 and follow Matthew Scannell down the Andretti straightaway. Watson looks very much at home. He really does as he Gets the pedal down, down the Andretti straightaway in the GMS Sheer Metal APC back number nine. As the crews watch on, we continue under green. There is the winningest active driver in the NASCAR Binti Series here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. He has five wins to his credit coming into this event. And he is out in front by more than 11 seconds currently. Kevin Lacroix, well out in front. 11 seconds over the course of 40 plus laps though. That's only a quarter of a second a lap difference. That's after pit stops, so many things that can go wrong. A spin. A spin he, in turn one. We forget that he got together with a lap car in the early going and he's still that far ahead with seven laps now remaining here in the eBay Motors 200. Off of turn number two, down into three goes Lacroix in that red and white Dodge. There is second place. You see the black and red number 47, the WeatherTech sponsored Dodge LP Dumoulin currently sitting in second spot again, 10 seconds further back. And as laps wind down, you have to wonder, is this going to be a sprint? LP Dumoulin is 10 seconds behind with seven laps to go. He's got to make up more than a second a lap. He is faster right now than Kevin Lacroix. Gary Clute, Tagliani, Mark Antoine, Cameron, we should mention, back on the lead lap after pit stops have cycled through. His slick general tires, a little bit older than some of the race leaders, but he's still in the mix. Clute ahead of Tagliani by about eight car lanes, down through turn number one. How about the 84 there? Larry Jackson having a quietly good day in eBay Motors back entry. His car very clean and Jackson will tell you he's no road race ace. He's more of a survival expert on the road courses, but today he's really coming to, into his own. That's his calling card on the road courses. He keeps himself out of trouble generally, and it, it gains him a ton of positions from where he starts to where he generally finishes, and today has been a typical Larry Jackson day. You can see two drivers attacking harder in turn number five in the back end of the car not sliding around as it was earlier on in this event Gary Kalut 
in the final podium position currently Alex Tagliani giving chase there you can see your points leader coming into this event Trayton Lapsevich and the FBM number 20 is sticking with them he however is a lap down to this battle just ahead yeah, but what an education he's getting behind Gary Clute and Alex Tagliani. He's got speed. He was second fastest on the charts yesterday, but still running laps behind these two in the final laps of an event here at CTMP, Trayton Lapsovich. Those Lapsovich boys, they're like sponges. They can take in so much and then execute it on the racetrack. Well, and that's that's the one thing, too, that Trayton Lapsovich said. He was watching videos. He was doing his homework coming into this event, and that's why he made an error in practice, because he was trying something new. And we should say, too, that the Number one of J.P. Bergeron is currently in the free pass position. So in the event, we do get a late race caution, which at this point, it doesn't look like we're going to have one. He would get his lap back as a result. And what they do with yellow flags at CTMP by going back to the last completed lap, it does shuffle things up in the time. And we've got a problem. Mark Antoine Cameron off the pace in the number 96. He's looking at his gauges. The engine is still running, it's just not up to full song. And it quits. Headed up the hill into turn number five. And you could see him cue the radio there down into turn five. So at the exit here, we're going to know if he has any power because the Andretti straightaway is a long uphill climb. Remember, he was one of the drivers who stopped very early to take fuel and then was forced to take tires early as well, but could this be a fuel issue? So many laps under green flag, uncharacteristically for the eBay Motors 200 here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Normally, we have a handful of cautions at this point, and this will be at least a local caution in that but, area. But they don't have local cautions in NASCAR. You're either yellow flag all around the racetrack, they call the blue flag a mini spotter in this sport because it will indicate something. I, I can't believe we've not gone yellow yet with a car stopped at one of the fastest points on the racetrack. It's yeah, they passed the start finish line and still no double yellow flags from the race starter. So we remain under green with a car stopped down the back straightaway. Kevin Lacroix continues to lead. LP Dumoulin has chipped into his lead just a little bit, though. Now 8.7 seconds the last time they crossed the strike. And I can only imagine Dumoulin and his crew lobbying NASCAR, saying, hey, you've got to go yellow. We can't keep racing like this. It, it, I, it's shocking to me. You see the 64 of Mark Dilley getting passed by your race leader, Byron Nelson from Leland was in attendance here today so good to see byron and group from leland as well they continue to race kevin lacroix in the 74 esr lacroix tuning entry and he's just about to go past i believe mark antoine camerant where is cameron he's just past that wave blue flag so he's not quite on the apex of that corner oh. there he is stopped that, that, going up that hill and now it is a full course caution that actually makes me sick to my stomach a little bit when you go on the onboard and see how fast they're going by a parked car you can't lift or else the driver behind you will take advantage but now everybody's going to ease up just a little bit and wow this is going to reshuffle and restack the deck as we get set for a dash to the finish the good news for Kevin Lacroix is there are not very many cars on the lead lap, so it's not like there's 15 cars going to be nipping at your heels, but still, this is not what the driver from St. Eustache wanted to see. That's Matthew Skinnell with the hood up, but another driver who hadn't pitted for tires yet looks like he's going to get some time. Yeah, this is an interesting call, guys, in the final two laps. DJ Kennington was planning on staying out on those tires, but this late caution, they're going to take a chance, put the slicks on, see if it can gain them any track spots. Well, you can't blame them for, for doing that, putting the slicks on. We've got... A number of drivers on the lead lap, six or seven once all this shakes out. A number of drivers one lap down. Here's another driver who had been on rain tires. Oh my goodness, LP Dumoulin in the number 47. Now remember when he made his pit stop for fuel, we talked about that engagement with the fuel nozzle in the back end of the car. It looked like fuel was spilling out around and not going in. Could he be out of gas as well? 
that's got to be the issue because he's turning the car over so it's it's doing what it needs to do just no fuel getting to it we're gonna find out right after this break on tsn And welcome back to the eBay Motors 200 at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park as we get set for a green white checker to finish it. It is Kevin Lacroix who will lead them back to green. Gary Clute will start alongside. And Kevin Lacroix electing the outside lane for the restart, but you can see it gives him a dry approach to turn number one. Look at Alex Tagliani in the 18. He'll take advantage as well. So mark the 18 now up in the second. Look at Montour go around the outside of the 31. Side by side for the lead. They almost touch at the entry of turn two. Kevin Lacroix will use a little bit of that runoff room, but they muscle his way back to the inside in turn number three. Tagliani holding on to that outside group, but here comes Clute back on the inside in the 59. A three-way battle for this top spot. Oh, oh contact oh. between Clute and Tagliani. And we have problems in turn number three, and it looks like this will draw yet another caution. It's a big one. Several cars involved. It looks like Ray Quartermosh Jr. got the worst of it. LP Dumoulin involved as well in that WeatherTech number 47 machine. And Peter Clute in the six also involved, but there you can see drivers trying to get out of that wet grass with slick tires makes it very difficult. But one driver who will not be moving is Ray Cordemos Jr. in the EHR number eight. Doesn't look like LP Dumoulin took a lot of damage. They were kind of an aftermath. Yeah, they came in late to that party. It's right on board with Dumoulin. Actually, everybody sort of went slow motion into the tire wall, but the damage to Ray Cordemos Jr. is extensive to the front end of that Chevy Camaro. It's really once you get out into the grass, you're along for the ride at that point. You really are. LP Dumlin, though, was fortunate in the way his car was positioned. He kind of slapped that tire wall and then nosed into Ray Jr. Quartermont, so without too much trouble. So we'll reset the field one more time. We'll try it again. Another green-white checker coming up right here on TSN. So the field doubles up down the Andretti straightaway as we head towards turn number eight, looking for the pace car to pull in this time. But look at Kevin Lacroix's opted to choose the inside lane for this restart. Changing things up as Lacroix, Daniel Bois, restarting in the fourth position in this number 31, an impressive drive for the driver from Bracebridge. Gary Clute once again to the outside now of the 74. Alex Dangliani inside of row number two, tucked in behind Kevin Lacroix. They jump on the loud pedal, headed towards turn number one. How about Dexter Stacy in the 92? He got the free pass on the last yellow, which allows him to restart right up with the top four drivers and contend for a podium finish. On board with Alex Tagliani, he slots into that third position behind Lacroix and Clute. Clute now looks to the inside. In turn number three, here he comes. The Dodge poking his nose, looking for the lead. Side by side through turn number three. They will drag race towards turn four. It's Clute who will be on the outside. Lacroix on the inside. Daniel Bois takes a look for third around the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Can't make it work. That car's off the pace. Stacy will pull through and pick up a spot in turn five. Yeah, he slowed dramatically there, and it looks like he is not coming up to speed out of turn five. Gary Clute, though, your race leader down the back straightaway. And no fire on the 31 of Daniel Bois. He's stopped on the exit of turn number five. We stay green, though. DJ Kennington weaving his car back and forth. The Castro Edge Dodge looks to be out of fuel as well. Top four covered by a blanket as we reach the end of the straightaway in through turn number eight. They're going to have to go yellow. Daniel Bois, I mean, that is a treacherous spot. That is it just as the drivers are flat out coming out of the Moss hairpin. Well, at this point, it is a waved blue flag from the corner marshals, and we see the waved white flag from the flag stand. One more lap to go to make this official here in the eBay Motors 200. Gary Clute is out in front, but only by a couple of car lengths over the most aggressive driver in the history of the NASCAR Pinty Series, Kevin Lacroix, but Clute is pulling away. 
Clute has won in the past here at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Can he do it again here today? The number 59 has been so fast in practice and through the early portion of this race he's he had been in the mix the entire time now finds himself out in front in turn five for the final time this is a good passing opportunity but lacrosse not close enough no he's not he's gonna follow clute through it oh my goodness daniel bois completely stopped as the drivers come around what is mostly a blind corner but just disgusting to see. Well, Bois stopped on the inside, as you mentioned. We stay under green and look at Lacroix in the toe down the straightaway. He'll be looking to the inside in turn number eight, but Clute is ahead just enough to defend. Lacroix looks to the inside through eight. Where is he going to go towards nine? Lacroix to the inside. They make contact in turn nine. Oh, more contact. Clute out of shape. Clute out of contention. And Lacroix will take the win. Canadian Tire Motorsport Park Taglietti second and Dexter Stacy, a podium finisher for the first time in his career. A career best finish for Dexter Stacy. Gary Clute was able to cross the finish line in fourth. LP Montour rounding out the top five and oh my goodness what a finish Dave. Second race in a row we've had this happen as an exciting finish. Let's take another look. The hole opens up in turn number nine. They make contact side to side. Wow. Lacroix was moving back to the inside in 10, and the 59 was still there. Now right on board with the driver, the 74. He accelerated and then slowed down. Either way, Gary Clute does not agree with it. You can see him pulling up beside the 74. Todd Lewis is with the winning crew chief. Said it was pretty nerve-wracking up there right till the end, but your guy came out in front of the checkers. Yeah, he did a good job. We got the best driver out there and uh, pretty proud of him. Nice win. Congratulations. Thank you. Brand new sponsor on board for the 74 team. Let's take a look at your top 20 finishers. Gary Clute relegated to fourth spot, but how about LP Montour? Top five. Montour with a great finish. LP Dumoulin, that team fought back. Brandon Watson with a solid top 10. DJ Kennington falls out of the top 10, but manages an 11th place finish. Daniel Bois, after that heartache, finishes 12th. Sure. He won here in 2016. He won twice in 2017, and he also won twice in 2019. At the first race here of the year at CTMP, Kevin Lacroix is a winner again. Six times you have a win at this track, and you had to fight for it on the last lap here. Yeah, well, it was uh, dominant all race long on the rain. Uh, built a 15-second laps and then uh, advance. And then yellow came out at the end, and... Uh, I was worried a bit because they were, uh, you know, I was pay, uh, keeping the car safe uh, while leading, while they were battling and, you know, finding the new edges on the track with the uh, trying up. And then on the last few laps, uh, Gary got by me. It was, uh, he was fast. And then at the end, the first, uh, the last uh, three uh, corners, he was, all, he was all over the place. And if you don't belong there, they move out of there. You know, if you cannot win a race with, with watching in your front uh, windshield, just move away so uh that's what i did tried to pass him clean and then we banged doors so let's go need to win <laughs> kevin lacroix a winner here at ctmp he'll go for the sweep again later this season we're with alex tagliani alex a wild finish to that one take us through the last couple cautions and laps you had a good view of that one yeah it was uh it was a strange race um we were fast early on we lost the balance of the car and then um and then I was just maybe saving myself too much. Uh, I didn't know, you know, how far we could push it. And uh, also fuel was a concern for a lot of people. So uh, at the end, uh, we, we, we could turn it up and uh, we were good. But, you know, it was good uh, championship uh, points day. Um, didn't want to risk it too much. Uh, I knew it was going to get tough in the last couple of corners. Absolutely crazy weekend here. You got out safe tags. That's all that matters. Yeah, and, and for, for everybody, I mean, uh, you know, uh, we need to take our hat off to, to the people here at the track at Mossport, everybody that, some people got injured, but, uh, you know, everybody got home safe at the end and all the work they've done and all the fans here that, that stayed into this crazy weather and uh, finally we put a good show. Great points day and great finish for Alex Tagliani here at CTMP.
Dexter Stacy with the best career finish here on the podium at CTMP. That smile says a lot in your face. Man, I worked, I worked hard for it all day. Like coming through the field, getting the lucky dog, caution came out, everything just played out perfectly. What a ride for Dexter Stacy. Congratulations. Thanks, guys. An ice racer from Kanawaki, Quebec, as we take a look at the point standings. Kevin Lacroix now out on top over Trayton Lapsovich. Alex Tagliani, Gary Clute tied for third, eight points back. Brandon Watson rounds out the top five. What a show it has been. The first two races of the NASCAR Binti Series, explosive finishes. There's Rob Bigler from eBay Canada handing out the hardware as Kevin Lacroix takes a top step on the podium. Joined by Alex Tagliani and Dexter Stacy, all smiles. The second race of the 2022 NASCAR Pinty Series season has been brought to you by Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. By Sunbelt Rentals, ready to work equipment when and where you need it. And by Castro Edge. So we end the day relatively dry, the sunshine trying to come out, but that wasn't the whole story here today. It certainly wasn't. What we've learned this season, a lot of teams have shown up ready, ready to compete, Dave. In all conditions, you can see the wet track when we took the green here in the eBay Motors 200, but the drivers ready to attack, and they did the entire race. Early trouble for the 96 of Mark Antoine Cameron. He battled back right to the end. And I think we're going to look back at the end of the season on drivers who persevered. The LP Dumlins, who never gave up, got the car back on track. Big celebration from the podium finishers. From all of us at Fuel Media Lab, we'll see you at Autodrome Chaudière. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.